So let's take a look at Docker files. And this is a file that is used to run uh, the commands that would be required to assemble the final image, uh, your Docker image. And so here's an example of a Docker file. Uh, and this is for setting up a Ruby on Rails application and it has uh, the Postgres client so it can use Postgres database and it's installing Node.js probably for um, its front end stuff. Um, but let's just walk through here and kind of understand how this uh, Docker file works. So the first command we have here is called from, and this allows us to pull in another Docker image as the basis of our Docker file. Uh, the reason why you do this is because if you had to set up Ruby, there's a lot of dependencies and this would make this file really large. So it's nice to be able to build off another uh, Docker image. And after this uh, Docker file is turned into a Docker image, you could then build off of that one. So that's kind of an interesting strategy. Then you have the run command, and this allows you to execute any kind of like uh, command that you normally run in bash. So you see app get, so we're installing packages. And they have mkdir, that's for making a new directory. And it does this in layers. So every time a run command for uh, uh, whatever's in the scope of it, it turns it into a layer. And uh, uh, as Docker as Docker is building that image, it caches those layers. So let's say you made a change later in this Docker file. Um, then what it would do is it wouldn't rebuild from scratch. It would just go from the last cache layer and then on. So that makes uh, rebuilding these a lot faster. The next thing is a working directory. And this allows you to change the default folder for future commands. So it just makes it a lot less verbose when writing, uh, uh, writing those future commands in this file. Then you have copy. This is going to copy files or folders from your local computer onto this image. Uh, then we have the entry point. So this is the command that is executed when the container is first started. And you cannot override this command. So that's what it's going to be. Then you have the expose. And this allows you to listen on specified network ports at runtime. We can see the port is 3000. That is the default port for Ruby on Rails when you're running in development mode. So it gives you an idea that this is a Ruby on Rails uh, app that's using Postgres that is intended for development. And the last one here is the command uh, uh, command command, and it is passing the default arguments for the entry point. So we're not sure what's in the entry point.sh, but there's something in there um, because it is clearly a bash script um, that does something and it was included into here. But what we're doing is we're passing in rail server hyphen B, so binding it to port 000. So that starts up the application. So hopefully that gives you a perspective of uh, you know what a Docker file is and how they work.